A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him, the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord. In him you are also being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Their message goes out through all the earth. Their message goes out through all the earth. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims His handiwork. Day pours out the word to day, and night to night imparts knowledge. Their message goes out through all the earth. Not a word nor a discourse whose voice is not heard. Through all the earth their voice resounds, and to the ends of the world their message. Their message goes out through all the earth. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as Lord. The glorious company of apostles praise you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went up to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. When day came, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose twelve, whom he named also apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called a zealot, and Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the feast of two of the twelve apostles, Simon and Jude. Jude being the one that many of you pray to for impossible cases, right? Um, but all of them uh, apostles uh, who, as we hear from the gospel, were chosen specially from among the wider group of Jesus' disciples. Now, disciple is a follower a learner, a student, one who is trained in the ways of the master. This is what the word signifies. Apostle is a word that signifies, and this is all from Greek, one who is sent. So Jesus is, if you will, the apostle, the one sent from the Father. But then he sends us. He sends others among his disciples for a specific mission of spreading the gospel. And this is the first point to be made, that the apostles come from the disciples. Notice what, what, what the gospel passage says. He called to himself the disciples, and from them chose apostles. A proclaimer of the gospel must be a believer in the gospel. One who gathers others to Jesus must himself be following Jesus. One responsible for teaching the faith must be adhering to the faith. The apostles are chosen from the disciples. And an apostle, no matter how much authority he may be given, and the twelve, all twelve were given significant authority, and their successors are the bishops who have primary responsibility to teach the faith. But no matter how much authority they're given, they never lose 
their duty to be a disciple. That's point number one. Secondly, as the first reading indicates, the apostles are the foundation of the household of God, but not just the apostles, it's the apostles and prophets. And that's a key insight as well, because the foundation of the church is not any one individual other than Christ Jesus himself, but it is rather the witness to the word of God that the apostles and prophets alike were responsible for and faithful to. The foundation of the apostles and prophets. In other words, when an apostle is chosen, when a leader in the church carries out his duties, he is not the font, the source, the origin, or the arbiter of the word he preaches. It's the foundation of the apostles and prophets. The prophets proclaimed the word of the Lord, preparing for the coming of Christ, pointing out what is right and what is wrong, speaking to kings and those in authority, urging the people to follow the true God and to abandon idolatrous practices. The apostles are built into that tradition and are not authorized to change it. The foundation of the apostles and prophets is one foundation. You can't alter it. Moreover, it's a building into which people are being welcomed. It's a dwelling place for God in the Spirit, as Paul says in this reading. It's an entire structure being built together in the Lord, and it's the household of the Lord. Again, emphasizing that every apostle is a servant of the word, the truth, the faith that has been entrusted to us, and that we're not gathering people together just for the sake of being welcoming or being nice or just gathering people together. We're calling them to something, something very specific, something very well-defined. We're not calling them to something nebulous, and we're certainly not calling them to join a club where they can continue believing whatever they want and doing whatever they want. We're calling them be to belong to the household of God, which means you have to become like God, which means you have to listen to God, which means you have to change your center of gravity from yourself to God. It's a sacred temple, a dwelling place of God in the Spirit, built on the solid teaching of the apostles and prophets. And a final point. Jesus taught, not only called his, his, his 12 of these disciples to be apostles, but he taught them how to lead. Among the Gentiles, he said to them, those in authority lord it over the people. They make their authority felt. Being an apostle is not about authority. It's about service. Jesus said, it shall not be that way among you that you lord it over the people. Rather, the greatest will be the least, the most powerful will be the servant of all. And then he points to himself and he says, The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. Now, what is the service? It's not just some kind of let's do good for people. It's to give his life as a ransom. Ransoming us from the kingdom of Satan. Give your life as a ransom for the many. Jesus serves us by shedding his blood for us. The apostles, with the exception of St. John who died naturally, the apostles shed their blood, which is why on the Feast of the Apostles today we're wearing red. They knew how to serve. It's not about them, it's not about power, it's not about authority, it's not about being able to tell people what to do. It's certainly not about limiting the word and work of God, which unfortunately some leaders in the church do. They do exactly the opposite of what they're called to do. Instead of fostering the word of God, they hinder it. But no, the service Jesus taught these men was to give their lives. And they learned that lesson, didn't they? They were not afraid to shed their blood for the gospel 
in which they believed and which they taught faithfully. It's an example for leaders today, but it's an example for every disciple. Let us give ourselves completely for that word of God, for that Christ in whom we believe. Let us build his kingdom. Let us extend his gospel. Let us build the kingdom of life. And let us rejoice that he has called us to serve that kingdom. Amen.